Joe and Mac, also known as Caveman Ninja, is a 1991 side-scrolling platform game by Data East. The game did receive ports for the Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, NES, Game Boy, Amiga, and PC. I'm going to focus on the Super Nintendo port. In the game, you can control characters who are Joe and Mac, who uses weapons such as boomerangs, bones, fireballs, and my personal favorite, stone wheels. The game features colorful graphics with decent music. One of the highlights in the game are the bosses. The bosses are unique that they are different kinds of dinosaurs that have different strategic ways of beating them. Another thing that I like about the game is that it is a two player game. Having two players is a lot of fun. In two player mode you can assist your partner to get hard to reach items and it also makes the game much easier. As you can all see the game takes place in prehistoric levels and the objective is to get to the end of the level and rescue the hostages. This game is simple but fun to play. There are many platforming jumps throughout the level. The game's controls are not that easy to control, however, it does take time to get used to. Overall, the game is an enjoyable experience. Did you know that Captain Commando was Capcom's original mascot? He appeared in many Nintendo games in the box advertising of other Capcom games. And also, the name Captain Commando utilizes the name Capcom within the first three letters of the name. Captain Commando has also developed different looks over the years. Anyways, Captain Commando is a beat em up style game that first appeared in the arcades during 1991. It was later ported to the Super Nintendo and is, and is a very close port with minimal differences. The story takes place in the year 2026, where the world is filled with crime. It is the job for the Commando team to once again clean up the crime and restore peace. In the game there are four playable characters who are Captain Commando, Mac the Knife, Ginsu the Ninja, and Babyhead. This game was heavily inspired by another Captain game, which is Final Fight. In fact, the setting of the game takes place in the future of Metro City, which is the city that was used in Final Fight. Both games play similar with slight differences. This game is much more violent, it shows dismemberment of enemies as well as blood. For the most part, the game controls are the same as Final Fight, which is a good thing. This game is really fun and it must play on the Super Nintendo. Demon's Crest is part of the trilogy of the Gargoyles Quest series. This game is a side-scrolling platform game developed by Capcom exclusively for the Super Nintendo. It was released in 1994 and it was overshadowed by other games during that time. The main reason why this game is underrated is because of two things. First of all, the box art did not help since it shows a demonic figure and many parents thought it was going to give nightmares to their child. And the second thing is that Capcom decided to change the name of the game. The game would have been more successful if it was called Gargoyles Quest 3. The main character in the game is Firebrand, who first appeared in the Ghosts and Goblins series. The plot in the game is to essentially collect six magical crests which are fire, earth, water, air, time, and heaven. The six magical crests grants Firebrand new abilities to help him out throughout the levels. This game has similar gameplay features to Mega Man and Metroid games. The game has a mixture of platforming and few RPG elements that makes this game unique for its time. The game also offers multiple endings which depends on the completion of the game. If you complete the game 100%, you are granted with a better ending with two new bosses to complete. The game requires players to backtrack to previous levels in order to complete the game. The soundtrack and the graphics in the game are dark and has a gothic feeling that perfectly fits the game. This is one of my personal favorite Super Nintendo games.